This is the original Oatner pinwheel calculator series 24. I have taken off the casing so that you can see the inside and I'll show you the mechanism and how it works. This is a fairly standard pinwheel machine and many aspects of it haven't changed since the 1870s when it was first designed by Wilgot Oatner. The input levers here can be moved and when you do so pins get extended and uh, yeah if you move it all the way nine little pins are extended so that when you then turn the crank all nine pins will increment uh, that number wheel via this intermediate wheel. Each pin moves that intermediate wheel one step which moves the number wheel one step. The carry mechanism uh, is here and it uses these uh, carry switches. When a number wheel moves from zero from nine to zero it pushes out this carry switch and here you see a helical arrangement, a spiral arrangement of small pins, pins that can deflect to the left. And such a pin will be uh, engaged by this uh, uh, carry switch. So that carry switch pushes that pin to the left and uh, increments the next digit. That carry switch also gets then uh, pushed back, reset, because the groove that it's uh, in uh, ends around here, so uh, yeah, it gets pushed back into uh, beginning position. This uh, drum also has another spiral of these carry pins that go in the opposite direction and those are for subtraction. When you move this clockwise those pins don't do anything, no they just pass by unused. But uh, when you turn the crank in the opposite direction those are the ones that do the carry. So the uh, carry switch is pushed out and yeah, there the carry happened through this first pin of this, uh, these uh, subtraction carry pins. Um, yeah, so that's the main register and its carry mechanism. Over here you have a, a small uh, latch that ensures that uh, the crank can only be turned w in one direction and not uh, change direction halfway through. So once you've started a, a clockwise turn you cannot then uh, reverse. This uh, small latch has uh, freedom of movement when this, uh, the crank is in the rest position so there it can go in either direction, but as soon as you've chosen a direction it, uh, it can then uh, grab onto this uh, notched wheel. That, that wheel has no notches, has a big uh, dent right where it's in the rest position, so that's where it can change direction. Um, yeah, this lever that pushes this, this latch out of the way and disables it. So if, if you push this lever, yeah, it can go in either direction without, uh, without being blocked. And that's used by the clearing mechanism of the input. The input clearing mechanism uses this, uh, this comb in front of the, the input pins. And yeah, when you push this to the left to engage this uh, clearing mechanism, 
Yeah, this bar moves to the left and that pushes this lever. This bar also has a, a finger on this end and that pushes against this thing here. And uh, this is a, a locking system for the input pins. Uh, as soon as you pull out the crank handle, that locking system gets engaged so that the input pins are now immovable, they cannot be changed. That ensures that the uh, input that you've set is locked in and doesn't get, uh, yeah, get lost by friction or whatever. So uh, when you uh, do the clearing, set the clearing uh, mechanism of the input, that also disengages this lock, so that yeah, when you uh, when you then uh, yeah, that allows you to to uh, reset these input pins while uh, while the crank is moving. So the, the clearing mechanism uh, is used by, um, you use it by engaging it, turning the crank so that all the pins, the input levers get caught by this comb and then you return the crank. So for that to work, those input pins, input levers need to be movable and the crank needs to be, uh, yeah, returned. Both those mechanisms uh, yeah, there are two mechanisms that need to be disabled, both the returning of the crank with this and the input uh, lock with this. Over on this side is the mechanism that uh, uh, increments the counter. It automatically chooses the uh, direction in which it has to move after you've cleared the counter, the direction isn't set. It's only set when you turn the crank the first time. There are two gears here, and one of them will be driven by the crank shaft, uh, the crank uh, axle. Whichever way this turns, uh, one of these gears moves forward and the other moves backwards. So this one always moves towards you and this one always moves uh, away from you, whichever direction you turn the crank. So when you start a turn, one of the wheels gets pushed aside and is disengaged and the other is uh, driven by the crank. This uh, piece then moves down to lock those uh, wheels in place. So now I've done a clockwise turn of the crank and this system is set up to increment the counter with clockwise turns because it's driven through this gear in that direction. If I do turn the crank in the opposite direction these gears still remain in that way and yeah the whole thing moves in the opposite direction and decrements the counter. If I reset the counter, what happens is uh, this lever gets pushed up and that releases this latch so that the direction is uh, yeah, uh, not set anymore. And if I now turn the crank anti-clockwise, do a subtraction, it's this gear that gets engaged and this one that uh, is pushed aside. And again, this piece moves forward to lock these two gears in position. And now an addition will uh, subtract one from the counter. This uh, lever here that uh, clears this uh, selection mechanism, this lever is also used as a, uh, a locking mechanism for the crank. When I uh, clear the main register, this lever moves a little bit and pushes down a, a plate at the back 
that ensures that the uh, that locks the crank up so that I cannot uh, turn it anymore. The same happens when I clear the counter, it locks up, but when I turn the counter it also moves this lever just a little bit further which clears the, uh, uh, the uh, counter direction. So as you can see it moves that plate back there so that the crank is locked but right at the end of the turn it moves it just a little bit further and that trips the release of this, uh, this piece here. The uh, counter has a very nice uh, carry mechanism that's also driven through here. Uh, there's, a, there's an axle with a sliding uh, gear on it. Let me just zoom in so that you can see. So there's a, a gear right there. Let me uh, just shift the crank out, of, shift the carriage out of the way. There's a gear right there that, uh, yeah, that slides on an axle. And that axle drives this gear, which drives the axle underneath here that has the carry mechanism. Let me just turn this around and maybe we can then see the carry mechanism. So here is the uh, the axle that gets uh, yeah driven by the the main crank, the crank axle, and back here is a is a row of uh, small discs with uh, fingers on them. That uh, yeah, those fingers push uh, push these wheels around, cause the carry. When uh, one of the wheels uh, carries over from 9 to 0, it pushes aside one of these discs which in turn will then uh, execute the carry on the ne next, uh, next wheel. Let me see if I can show you how that, uh, show you that in ac action. So let's clear this. I'll do one addition to set the direction. Now two subtractions and it should now carry all the way to the end. And if I do an addition, the same thing. This machine also has a, a back transfer mechanism and that's, uh, that's over here. Let me, just, uh, let me just first enter a number. And move it slightly so that you can see what happens. If I push down the the lever for the back transfer mechanism. Uh, an axle moves out, and that uh, yeah, that has these gears on it, uh, and those uh, will then uh, engage the input uh, discs. So if this is now cleared, those input discs move forward by the uh, the amount that was on the wheels. Of course, because I moved it, it only did it for the digits that were actually there, further to the left. But uh, let me do that again, just to add some number and clear this. So if I engage the, the mechanism, these gears lift up. There you go. 
Um, this works because on the bottom of these input uh, discs you have these this uh, row of uh, teeth which are engaged by that back transfer mechanism. Those discs, by the way, also have teeth up here and I think those are for the input display register in other models but on this model this uh, it doesn't have that. The model 25 does, it has an extra register up here which shows you what uh, the input is but uh, yeah that, that would use uh, gears that engage with this but this machine doesn't have that but they use the same parts so yeah that's why those uh, yeah why these teeth are here even though this machine doesn't use it So that was the uh, original Odner Series 24. Thank you for watching.